Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Farnas Mohammadi. Um, I'm very happy to talk about this project. Uh, I'm a fourth year grad student in Dr. Myers' lab. So um, thank you for the opportunity. So great to have uh, OK, I'm going to talk about a model we developed, a lineage tree based on a model to quantify cellular heterogeneity and plasticity. Uh, cancer therapies are not always 100% curative uh, because there is um, often a subpopulation of cells that uh, respond differently to the drug and uh, some of them could repopulate the tumor. Uh, one of the sources of this variability is um, cell plasticity or the ability of cells to alter their phenotype reversibly. Um, um, uh, for example, there's a study that says if you have a breast cancer cell population and you use facts in order to sort out uh, various types of cells and you let these separate uh, purified cell populations uh, grow for a couple of days, uh, at the end, they, each of them will recreate the heterogeneity in their parent cell population. And uh, so this, um, which means that the cells have been um, trying, have been um, altering their phenotype and transitioning to one another, which makes it uh, hard to design anti-cancer therapies uh, because if we had only those purified populations, we could treat them with their relevant drugs and eliminate the tumor. But um, this makes it you know, complicated to design anti-cancer uh, um, the common approach to study drug response is uh, um, it based on population samples of endpoint cell viability measurements. Uh, however, if you want to comprehensively account for evolutionary processes such as um, heterogeneity, we need to look at each single cell over time. Also, uh, lineage tracing has uh, helped us to explore uh, the genealogical principles of um, uh, of uh, dynamical processes uh, and, in or, and it has helped us to identify the sources and the extent of these uh, dynamical uh, processes. Uh, for example, in the top, uh, there's a study uh, that, um, that shows cells have been uh, treated with osimertinib for 14 days and there is a subpopulation of resistant cells and uh, they have used uh, uh, lineage tracing in order to trace the clonal origin of these uh, resistant cells. Also, it's important to account for the relationship uh, between the cells. Uh, as an example, in this study, they have shown that there is a high correlation between uh, sister cells and, uh, and uh, cousin cells. There's a high correlation uh, in uh, the amount of time they spend during their cell cycle. There's also a correlation between mother and daughter cells to a lesser extent. So uh, it's important to account the relationship between the cells and also the inheritance. Uh, when we are studying heterogeneity. So we decided to develop a model uh, for single cell lineage data in order to investigate the phenotypic uh, heterogeneity in drug response in cancer cells. So in order to collect the data, uh, we used a fluorescent reporter that, uh, that could translocate between nucleus and cytoplasm and show uh, the, the face of cells at each time. So uh, we treated AU565 breast cancer cells um, uh, with, a, kind of, with a variety of anti-cancer compounds and uh, we tracked the single cells over time, um, a couple of hundred thousand cells, I don't know, a hundred thousand, a thousand of cells. Mm -hmm. And this is a snapshot of the data in the formal lineage format. Uh, so we have uh, each, each cell in here is shown as a line. Uh, cells that are spending their time in G1 are shown as gray lines and then cells transition to G2 uh, the, the line becomes a red line. So we can show that um, division uh, in here and then cells die uh, when a line is terminated. On the right, we have cells that are treated with uh, 10 nanomolars of gemcitabine. And clearly we see that a lot of, um, we see a lot of long um, uh, red lines, which means that gemcitabine is um, arresting cells in S and V2 phase uh, and sometimes uh, conducting, uh, inducing uh, cell death in SRG2. So uh, we wanted to um, have a general tool to work with uh, lineage measurement and be able to infer single cell state only using the observation of cells and the relationship between the cells. So this definition um, fits, the, uh, fits the definition of hidden Markov models. Uh, so the difference uh, between this and HMMs are, is that 
our data is in the form of binary trees. Uh, so we had to modify the algorithms of HMM in order to fit our uh, data structure. Uh, the observations that we have are the duration of G1 and SG2 phases, um, and also the fate of cells at the end of each of these phases. For example, whether so cells made it to, uh, to the end of G1 and they transition to G2 or they just die in G1. Uh, like other HMM, uh, HMMs, we use the expectation maximization in order to predict the single cell states and also to estimate the distribution parameters corresponding to each of those states. And so we do expect ES7 and S7 to convergence. So the outputs of our model would, could be the transition probabilities between different states or it could be the, the, the um, state distribution parameters. For example, we could, identify, we could uh, infer the distribution of G1 phase duration for cells that are in state one. And also we could um, have a tree of states, which means uh, we could assign each cell uh, its most uh, probable state. Uh, and last but not least, we could infer the, no the most likely number of states in our population. So experiments um, always uh, influence our data in a way that we don't want. In an ideal world, um, if, you, if you want to have a, a lineage tree of cells, it would look like this, where we have all the information of, about all of the cells. We know when they divide, when they die. So um, nothing is missing. But in, the re in reality, we have to kill the cells at the end of experiments. Um, and uh, this will create um, missing information in the form of time censorship. So we wouldn't know if these cells would have like died or how long they would have lived. Uh, if we don't handle this missing information correctly, we could have um, uh, biased estimate estimations or uh, uh, less state assignment accuracies. But what we did was we used um, survival functions and um, sensor estimators, and we could have um, a relatively higher accuracy of first state assignment. Um, because the cell states are not discrete and they could have overlap, uh, we wanted to know how different two states have to be for our model to be able to distinguish them. So we created a synthetic data of um, two states from very different to, to from very similar, very different. Um, in a way that we calculate the distance between the states using raster synthesis. And uh, we calculated the state assignments accuracy for these scenarios. We see that for vascular synthesis of almost 40, which would be something like slightly different, we could have a state assignment accuracy of 90% or higher. We also, can, we also cluster cells using k-means as our baseline. So uh, here we can see that our model is always being better than k-means uh, because it's considering the relationship between the cells. So we use Bayesian information criterion in order to um, find out the most likely number of states. To show that our model is actually capable of identifying the true number of states, we created uh, four synthetic populations from one true state to four true states. And in all of them, we can see that our model is actually picking the correct number of states. We use the same metric uh, for our experimental data uh, of lopatinib and gencitinib treatments. And in lopatinib, we see that um, our model picked six and for gencitinib five. In the interest of time, I'm gonna just talk about the gencitinib treatment analysis. Um, in, in these five states, we see that we could have uh, stable states like state four, uh, uh, as well as um, cycles. So in order to go in more depth, we could look at the single cell state assignments. For example, in state one, in control condition, we see that cells are like, moderately proliferating, but when you treat them with higher concentrations of gencitinib, we see a lot of cell death in G1, which is uh, shown as the thicker line, and G2 is, is shown as a thinner line. Uh, we see a lot of the G1 cell death and a lot of uh, G2 arrest. In contrast, uh, for cells in state four, we see uh, fastly proliferating cells uh, in control, and, uh, and that when we um, treat cells with high concentrations of gemcitabine, they become highly arrested in SRG2. Our model provided some understanding of the structure of um, dynamic heterogeneous population. And also it could provide a link 
uh, between single cell phenotypes and overall population behaviors. Uh, we are hopeful that we could identify better treatments alone and in combination now that we have more information about the structure of heterogeneity in tumor, tumor populations. Uh, we have several challenges. Um, for example, right now our model is purely computational. And although we know that the, those clusters are different, but we don't know uh, what are the molecular differences between the cells that are in cluster one and cluster two. So uh, one thing that we are going to pursue is using uh, RNA-seq coupled with molecular barcoding in order to really understand what's the difference between the cluster. Also, another challenge is, is that data collection, like manually tracking cells over time is very labor intensive, especially if you want to study phenotypes like drug resistance that develop over time. But the good news is there are new approaches such as Cas9 enabled image tracing with single uh, single RNA-seq readouts or other computational approaches that makes it easier to track the cells. And also another talk that we, we listened to this morning. Um, also, um, another future approach would be testing the model on a wider range of drugs and cell lines to see if the patterns are more associated with, uh, what patterns are associated with drugs or what are associated with the different cell lines. With that, I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Meyer, and our collaborators, Dr. Gross and Dr. Heiser, who did all the data collection and testing cell tracing, Shakti, JC, and Mukwan. Thank you all for this. Thank you.